Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Um, today we'll be looking at um mobility statistics in um mobility statistics and we'll dwell much on incidence and prevalence then an attack rate. Okay, so that's what we're looking at today. My name is uh that is Arara Oyeka. Okay, so um. What are mobility frequency measures? Mobility has been defined as any departure, subjective or objective, from a state of physiological or psychological well being. So, in practice, mobility means disease, injury, and disability. So, when someone is having malaria, it's now in a disease state, it's a morbid, it's a morbid condition. Someone has an injury, let's say a uh, road traffic accident, it's a morbid condition. Someone disabled, okay, the person has lost his, any of his body part and the person cannot perform certain social roles. It's also considered as morbid uh, state. Okay, so in uh, morbidity frequency measures, we are going to be looking at the major ones that are frequent and relevant for public health and community health. And uh, one is incidence. Instead, we're going to look at the word incidence. But meanwhile, let me just give you an overview of what incidence is all about. Let's say um, you, you visited a place um, yesterday. Let's say you visited a College of Health and Law. And in two year three, there were about 20 students. And that 20 students, um, 10, 10 of those 20 students have malaria. 10 of the 20 students have malaria. For that day, for that day, the incidence of malaria is that 10 students that are new cases. And you the next, the next day, being today, you visited that same class that already have recorded 10 malaria cases. And on getting there, you got to realize that additional two persons also came down with malaria for today. So for today incidents, that's two new cases is the worst incidence. Whereas the 10 of yesterday and the current two that we are given today are uh, uh, the brave. So that's 10 of yesterday and two of today uh, summing 12 uh, is known as the prevalence of malaria for that class. Whereas the two you got today is the incidence of malaria in that class for today. Then if let's say you come for tomorrow again, you come to, you come to the class again and you recorded the addition now, okay, only two persons or only three persons again came down with malaria. So for that, for that of tomorrow, let's say you have three persons additional, that three persons are the incidence. Now, when you add that three persons, the already existing two, it becomes uh, the prevalence, total of 15. So that is just an overview of what incidence and prevalence is all about, okay? And prevalence helps us to calculate, to understand the burden of disease, the burden of disease in a particular place, area, or country. Whereas incidence tells us how fast a particular disease is, is active in infecting people, okay, the risk of coming down with the disease. That's what the incidence tries to let us know. Why prevalence tells us the burden of the disease, okay? Now, say incidence refers to the occurrence of new cases of diseases. Note, I'm, I'm not talking about incident rates or incident proportion. Now, at the moment, I'm talking about incidence. Incidence refers to the occurrence of new cases of diseases or injury in a population over a specified period of time. We have two types of incidents commonly used in health statistics or in public health or in community health. One is incidence proportion and incidence rate. From the previous class, we explained what proportion is all about. And one thing you must remember about proportion is that the numerator, is a part of the denominator for proportion. 
Whereas in incidents, we're looking at how fast or at, in, at what pace is the this is occurrence. Okay. So the two types of incidents commonly used incidents proportion and incidents rate. Now let's define incidence proportion. Incident proportion is the proportion of an initially disease-free population that develops disease, becomes injured, or dies during a specified period of time. So one thing you must know is that incident proportion is a proportion of initially disease-free people who are not having the disease that develops the disease because incidents are new cases that develops the disease or become injured or die during a specific period of time, okay? So incident proportion is synonymous with attack rate. So when you hear incident proportion, try to look out. It tells us or something regarding attack rate or risk or the probability of getting disease. It tries to calculate the probability of you coming down with the disease. So when you, whenever you hear of incidence proportion, you tell, tell us the attack rate, and the rate the disease is occurring, and your probability or your probability of coming down with that disease condition. Okay, so that's what incidence proportion is. Okay, so that's incidence proportion. Okay, so for example, now let's say um, we are uh, 50, or there are 50 students. The denominator is 50. Out of that 50, 20 came down with outbreak of cholera. So now we need to calculate the probability of every other person in that group coming down with a disease. What is the percentage? What is the what is the risk? What are the chances of every other person in that group coming down with that disease condition? And that will tell us how fast the disease, the, the, the pathogenicity of that disease. Okay, so that's what incident proportion tries to let us know. Try to determine the risk and the probability of you coming down with a particular disease condition. And the formula used is number of new cases of disease or injured persons during specified period over the size of population at start of the period times 100. So because we're looking at probability, and probability is equal to 1 or 100. So that's why we use 100. Because the, 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 the denominator put the size of the population. The numerator is part of it. There is people that is in this population now. Size of, let's say size of population is 500 people. It is still this 500 people that will come down with that disease. So now how many of them came down with the disease? So that's why we say is the numerator is a part of the denominator. Okay? So we're not looking at the proportion of what is the probability of one person coming down with that disease condition since all of them are exposed. Okay? Since all of them are exposed. So when, uh, we're going to look at what is the probability? What is the attack rate? What is the risk? of every member of this population coming down with a disease condition. Okay, that is incidence proportion. You can also call it attack rates. So either you call it incident proportion or you call it attack what rates. But by and large, all I want you to understand is that incident proportion this talks more about of the probability of coming down with a disease condition or the risk of you developing the disease, or the attack rate, okay? And it's usually 100 over one. So an attack rate or incidence proportion is the proportion of the population that develops illness during an outbreak. So that outbreak is occurring in that population. So now, in that population, how many persons in that population came down with that disease? From that, you can calculate the probability of every other person. This is the ratio of the total number of persons attacked by a particular illness in a given period to the total number of persons exposed to the risk of that attack expressed per 100. Attack rate is often used as a 
synonymous for risk. It is the risk of getting the disease during a specified period. So that's the formula. The total number of people attacked by illness or population exposed to the risk times 100. Take for example now, in an outbreak of gastroenteritis, that is vomiting and stooling, among attendees of a corporate, corporate picnic, 99 people ate potato salad, 30 of, 30 of whom developed gastroenteritis. 99, that is the total population now that were exposed. 99, 99 went for that picnic. And 99 went to that picnic, 99 ate the potato salad. But 30 of them developed vomiting and stooling. Calculate the risk of illness among persons who ate potato salad. I hope you understand. Calculate the risk of persons. Calculate the risk of illness among persons who ate the potato salad. Now, the numerator, which I, which I said is a part of the denominator. Look at the denominator is 99. And now the um now the look at the the, the, the denominator 99. Now that's what we have here. Okay, now the numerator, which is 30 persons that are still inside this, is a numerator. Okay. So now. Now, since we've been able to identify the, the numerator and the denominator, the next thing is to apply our formula, which is number of persons who came down with this condition and total number of persons who were exposed times 100. So 30 divided by 99 times 100 give us 0 0.3 times 100, sorry, we give us 30.3. So when you run it, when you run it up to the first, uh, when you run it up, you will be having 30%. So every member of the, every member of that place, of that, uh, uh, every person in that 99 persons who attended that picnic, picnic have 30% chances of coming down with gastroenteritis. Okay, so that is, so that is the risk that is the probability. That is the attack rate. Okay, so that is what attack rate is all about. It tries to help us calculate the risk, the probability, and the attack rate of a particular illness. So attack rate is a crucial epidemiological measure used to assess the spread and impact of infectious disease within a population. It provides valuable insight into the transmission dynamics and severity of an outbreak. The AR is defined as the number of new cases of specified disease, specific disease within a defined population over a specific time period. So it assesses it assesses uh, disease severity. It assesses disease severity by calculating the AR. Public health and community health personnel can determine the proportion of individuals who become infected during an outbreak. This information helps in understanding the severity of the disease and its impact on the population. I hope you understand. So now, the next is, it helps in identifying high-risk groups. Attack rates can be calculated for different subgroups within the population, such as age groups or geographical areas. This allows for the identification of high-risk groups that may require targeted interventions or preventing measures. So from the attack rate, if you see, let's say, a particular disease outbreak occurred, and a particular age group are the one coming down with this condition more frequently than other people. That will help us identify that these people are at risk, begin to investigate what is the likely cause, what can we do? Could it be that they are practicing poor, they have poor hygiene practices? Could it be that their immunity is down? Could it be that 
their living conditions are not healthy. So it helps us to identify and what plan. The next is monitoring disease transmission. Tracking the a AR over time helps in monitoring the progress of an outbreak. If the AR is increasing, it indicates ongoing transmission and the need for intensified control measures. Let's say there's an outbreak, outbreak of a gastroenteritis because of a polluted water. And every day people, the, the people keep on coming down with it. It, it actually tells us that that disease has entered community transmission. It's now moving from one person to the other. But it could also, it could also indicate a point source, a point of common source. So from there, we can say, ah, this disease is going on. What could be the cause? So conversely, a decline in AR suggests that control measures are effective in reducing transmission. So when you have identified an outbreak and, you, and measures we have put in place, let's say hand washing, uh, uh, social distancing, like in COVID-19, now you now calculate the attack rate, and the attack rate is high. You, it will help you know that the interventions are not actually working or we are not implemented. Okay? And those social strategies we are not put in place or we are just, we are not, we are not really implemented the way it should be or we are ineffective. So that is helps us in monitoring disease transmission. Another, another importance of AR is that it evaluates control measures. Attack rates can be compared between different population or time period to assess the effectiveness of control measures. For example, comparing the AR before and after the implementation of interventions can help determine their impact on disease transmission. We've said this before now. The next attack rate is known as the secondary attack rate. What secondary attack rate is, it, it tries to tell us kind of community transmission. They went to their respective homes and infected additional 10 persons. It actually means that the disease is highly infectious, that is now moving from one person to the other. That's what secondary attack rates try to help make us understand. So the number of new cases among primary contacts over total number of contacts, okay, that is 100 over one. Take for example, consider an outbreak of shigellosis in which 18 persons in 18 different households all became ill. If the population of the community was 1,000, then, then the overall attack rate was 18 divided by 1,000. You know the attack rate now? 18 people who came down with it, this is going on total persons exposed. So 18 divided by 1,000 times 100, it gives us 1.8%. That this is the attack rate. Now, one incubation period later, you know what's incubation period now? Mm -hmm. So one incubation period later, 17 persons in, uh, in the same households with these primary cases, that's people that are living together with these people who is the first 18 persons. Like say, let's, let's say they are siblings in that different 18 households, 17 again came down with shigellosis. That is 17 persons, we are new persons in different households, but their brothers, we are the first persons who suffered that condition. Let's say you, you are the one now, you had cough. You came to your house. Within two, two to three days, five or four of your brothers have come down with cough. That's secondary attack rate. So now in this particular exercise, exercise, within one incubation period, 17 persons in the same household with the primary cases developed shigellosis. If the 18 households include, included 86 persons, calculate the attack rates. If you understand, one incubation period later, 17 persons in the same household as these primary cases developed shigellosis. If the 18 households included 86 persons, calculate secondary attack rate. And we'll say the number of new cases among primary contacts over total number of Contact. So now it will be secondary attack rate is equals to 
17. 17 is the number of new cases among primary contacts from these people. Divide by 86 minus 18. Total number of contacts. You are going to remove the first set of persons who, who brought it. Now, from this exercise, it is showing that 18, I mean, 86 additional persons developed this shigellosis from this primary source, it primary source, primary source. Okay. Times hundred. So from our formula, number of new number of new cases among primary contacts is 17. The total number of contacts they have met is total of 86 persons. I don't know if you understand. Let's take it again. Consider an outbreak of shigellosis in which 18 persons in 18 different households all become ill. If the population of the community was 1,000, then the overall attack rate equals to 18 number of persons who came down with the disease over 1,000 times 100%. It gives us 1.8 as the primary attack rate or attack rate. Now, after one incubation period, 17 additional persons came down with the condition. Now, and these 18 persons have met contact with over 86 persons or with 86 persons. These 18, these 18 persons in 18 households have, have been able to have contact with 86 persons. And out of that 86 persons they have been able to have contact with, 17 came down with it. This is condition. Now calculate the secondary attack rate, which is now these secondary cases, 17, divided by 86 contacts minus 18 times 100, which now give us 25, 25%. So the secondary attack rate is 25%. Properties and uses of incident proportion. You know, is that we've, been, we've been on incident proportion where we have looked at the uh, attack rate and secondary attack rate. Now, incident proportion is a measure of the risk of disease or the probability of developing the disease during the specified what period. Now let's look at incidence rates. Remember, earlier we said that incidence proportion, I mean, incidence uh, uh, measure, there are of two major types, incident proportion or attack rate and incidence what rate. Now we're able to look at that, uh, um, incident proportion or attack rate. Now well, let's look at incidence rate. This is the ratio of the total number of new cases of a particular illness reported in a particular place in a given period per 1,000. This one is now by 1,000 because it's rated, okay? Unlike the other one, I say proportion. So the formula is number of persons starting an episode of illness in a defined period over the average number of persons exposed to risk during this period. What are the properties of this of incidence rate? An incidence rate de describes how quickly disease occurs in a population. How quickly, you see, that's what, why it's called a rate. Whether it is faster. But the other one tells us the risk of coming down with disease. Okay, the risk or the probability of coming down with the disease. Why do you tell us how fast or quickly disease occurs in a population? To calculate the incidence rate of a specific disease in a population over a certain period, the incidence rate is a measure of how many new cases of diseases occur within a population during a given time frame. So therefore, we always need number of new cases, like I explained earlier, over total population exposed. So taking this as an example, we have new cases of, number of new cases of a particular disease is 50 and population at risk is 10,000. So we apply a formula. We apply a formula and calculate. It will give us five persons 
per 1,000 population. For this example given above. So the incidence rate of the disease in this example is 5%, sorry, 5 per 1,000 population. This means that for every 1,000 individual in the population, there are five new cases of the disease during that specific what, period of time. Okay. It is important to note that the incidence rate is typically expressed as a rate per unit of population. 1,000, 10 times, to allow for easy comparison between different populations with varying size. So this one is to compare the rate of how quickly a disease is transmitting with RAS. So that one tells us the, 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 the risk or probability of coming down with a, a disease in a particular uh, community. Okay, so what are the difference between incidence rate and incidence proportion? or attack rates. Incident proportion attack rate. The incident proportion or attack rate is a measure of the proportion of individuals who develop a new case of disease within a specific time period. It is calculated by the number of new cases of disease by the total, num the total population at risk during that period. The result is usually expressed as a percentage. Incident proportion or attack rate is, is useful when studying outbreaks or short-term events such as foodborne illness, outbreak or epidemic. It provides a snapshot of the risk of developing the disease during a specified period. Whereas incidence rate is a measure of the rate at which new cases of disease occur within a population over a specified period. It is calculated by dividing the number of new cases of the disease by the total person, person time at risk during that time. Person time at risk takes into account the duration of time each individual is at risk of developing the disease. The result is usually expressed as a number of cases per unit of person time. Incident rate is useful when studying long-term trends or chronic diseases, as it accounts for differences in the duration of time individuals are at risk of developing the disease. It provides a more accurate estimate of the risk of developing the disease over a longer time period. So now let's look at prevalence. It's another morbidity statistics, I mean, morbidity measure. Prevalence sometimes referred to as prevalence rate is the proportion of persons in a population who have a particular disease or attribute at a specific point in time or over a specified period of time. Prevalence differs from incidence in that prevalence includes all cases, both new and pre-existing in the population at a specified time. Whereas incidence is limited to new cases only. In summary, prevalence refers to proportion of persons who have a condition at a, at or during a period, period or particular time period. The prevalence of a particular characteristic is a measure of how common that characteristic is in the population. A higher prevalence is an indication that a particular characteristic is more common, while a lower prevalence is an indication that a particular characteristic is less common. We have point prevalence, which refers to the prevalence measured at a particular point in time. It is the proportion of person with a particular disease or attribute on a particular date, point prevalent at a particular point. Whereas period prevalence refers to prevalence measures over an interval of time. It is the proportion of persons with a particular disease or attribute at any time during the interval. Let's say interval of six months, interval of three hours, interval of one year. Whereas a point prevalence is that at a particular date hmm? or a particular hour. Now, calculation. This is the formula. Number of persons who are, at, who are sick at a given time over average number of persons exposed. Okay. Is usually expressed 
So, so this is the ratio of the total number of new cases of a particular illness plus those having the illness already. New cases plus those having the illness already to the total population as opposed to the risk per 1,000 because it is used to compare population groups. Note, the value of the, the night is usually one or hundred hundreds for common attributes. And the value for the n might be 1,000, 100,000, or even 1 million for rare attributes and for most diseases. So to calculate the prevalence rate of a specific disease in a population, the prevalence rate is the proportion of individual in a particular in a population who have a particular condition at a given point in time. Okay, so this is just it. So now, taking an example here, let's assume we have a population of ten thousand individuals. And out of those, 500 individuals have malaria. We can calculate the prevalence rate using the formula. Prevalence rate, number of individuals with the disease divided by total population times 100. In this example, the prevalence rate would be 500 divided by 10,000 times 100, which is 5%. So the prevalence rate of disease in this population is 5%. In another example, in a suburb of 1,150 women, who gave birth in May in 2000, a total of 468 reported taking a multivitamin at least four times a week during the month before becoming pregnant. Calculate the prevalence of frequency multivitamin use in this group. The numerator would be this, 468. Okay. Whereas the denominator, which is 1,150 women gave birth, uh -huh, and total of 46 reported taking multivitamin. So, this is the number of persons taking the multivitamin. And this is the denominator, the total number of women who gave birth, who are supposed to take the multivitamin. But it's only 468 that we are taking the vitamin. So, the prevalence would be calculate the prevalence of frequency. So, it would be the total number of persons they exposed, which is 1,150 over number of persons who we are taking the multivitamin. But as this 1,150, we are expected, expected to take the multivitamin too, times 100. So it give a 40%, 40.7% is the prevalence of frequent multivitamin use in this group. Okay, so it is important to know that prevalence rates can vary depending on the population and time period considered. Prevalence rates are typically used to estimate the burden of a disease in a population. Okay. Difference between incidence rate and prevalence rate. The incidence rate refers to the number of new cases of diseases that develop within a specific, specific period, sorry, specific population over a defined period of time. It measures the risk of developing a disease within a population at risk during a specific time period. Incidence rate is usually expressed as the number of new cases per unit of population at risk. It helps in understanding the rates at which new cases of a disease are occurring and provides insight into the risk factors and causes of the disease. Incidence rate is commonly used in studying infectious disease, chronic disease, and other health conditions. Prevalence rate. The prevalence rate refers to the total number of existing cases of a disease within a specific population at a given point in time. It measures the proportion of individuals in a population who have a particular disease at a specific point time. Prevalence rate is usually expressed as the number of cases per unit of population, 1,000 or 100,000. It helps in understanding the burden of a disease in the population and provide insight into the overall impact of diseases. 
Prevalence rate is commonly used in studying chronic diseases, long-term conditions and diseases within a longer duration. And summary, the incidence rate focuses on new cases of a disease occurring over a specific time period, while the prevalence rate focuses on the total number of existing cases at a specific point in time. Both rates are important in epidemiology and provide different perspectives on disease occurrence and distribution in a population. Thank you.